Well, hello Internet, and welcome to part four of my How to Code PHP tutorial. Today I'm going to cover functions, describe to you what scope means, cover a whole bunch of date and time functions, and talk to you a lot about databases. You've seen a lot of built-in functions, now you'll learn how to make your own. The basic structure follows just like this. You first have the keyword function, followed by whatever the function's name is, any arguments that you want passed to that function, and then between curly braces you would perform whatever actions you'd like. This function accepts two variables. These variable names don't have to match the variable names that lie outside of the function. The body of the function lies between curly braces, and you can perform any actions inside a function that you can perform outside of it. You can return a value to the calling statement with the return statement, as I did here. This function could have been called with a statement like the example I have here on the right side of the screen. Here I'm assigning the value returned from the function add values to the variable addition by passing two variables to it being the number one and number two. You can send any variable type to a function as long as you send them in the proper order. By creating default argument values you have a safeguard you can use to make sure functions don't throw an error. You can define default values like this. As you can see here I'm defining a default value for both the variable named first num and second num if you define default values and no arguments are sent, the default values are used. If new arguments are sent, however, then the default values are ignored. The variables you define within your functions are not available outside of your function body. This is what we mean when we talk about scope. You could actually use the same variable names inside and outside of your functions, but you might not want to do that as it will cause confusion. If you do have a variable that you want to be available throughout all of your code, define it as a global variable. You do that with the keyword global, like I have here in this example, have the word global followed by a variable name. Just so you know, a variable defined within a function is called a static variable. You can get a lot of information on the date and time with the PHP engine. The date function is used to return you this information and it has the following function. Here are all the date codes available for you to use with the date function. Pretty much everything you can think of that you'd want passed in regards to date or time. Here is an example if we would echo what the date function returned based off of the codes we entered here. It would print out to the screen that it is currently 352 on Monday, April the 19th, 2010. Which also just so happens to be my daughter's birthday. In a future video, I'll cover how to process form data and then give you the example code behind sending mail. Here I'll just describe the function and how to use it. Here is the basic format for the mail function. You have mail and then inside of the brackets, who you want to mail it to, what the subject should be, what the body of the email should be, who it's from, being you, if you wanted to put a reply to, and then there's two additional variables here, the CC and the BCC. You don't need to enter values for the reply to CC or BCC. I'll trust that you know how to use email and won't go into what those codes mean. As long as your server is set up right, that is all you need to do to send an email. Also, if your server has a default email set, you won't need to fill in a result for the from variable. Before you can start querying a database, you have to connect to it. Here is the code behind doing that. You use the function MySQL with an underscore connect to create a reference, in this case the variable name DBS. You can use this to access the database. You have to pass it three variables being the host address of the database, the user ID, and password for the database. If the connection fails, the OR statement here will print out an error message. I'm often asked how you would get a database host address you would get that from your hosting company. Now that you have a reference for the database, you have to signal that you want to use the database, much as you do with the use command in SQL. If you didn't see my SQL tutorial, you should most definitely check that out. You tell the database that you want to use it by calling the following statement. The at symbol followed by MySQL underscore select underscore DB, followed by the database name and then we have a conditional here that will print to the screen if an error occurred. You obviously want to keep the above information private so make sure it is inaccessible privilege wise. Make sure it has the extension .php. Save it to a directory that's outside of the root directory. 
and access it with the require once function like I show here. Now you're connected to your database, so I'll go over how you query the database. You can perform any query inside of PHP that you can using the SQL terminal. The standard structure of a query in PHP would be whatever you want the, name, the variable name for your query result to be added to, followed by equals and then MySQL underscore query and then whatever your query would be. Normally it is common to assign an SQL query to a variable, in this case the variable name query, and then send that query to the MySQL query function. Here's a real world example. What I'm doing here is performing an insert into the table named customer and I'm assigning the values peekaboo followed by giddy to the variables first name and last name. When you query a database with these SQL statements being insert, delete, alter, or update, there is no value to return. So what is returned? Well, if the query process properly, you receive the value true and false otherwise. The MySQL fetch array function is used to retrieve information when a query generates it. You need to pass the value of query underscore result to this function inside of a while loop that will spit out one record after another until there are no more results. Here's an example of that. You can access the value of row, which is an array, either by column name or by entering a number that represents the first through the number of total columns returned. And that's the end of part four of my How to Code PHP tutorial. Check in next time where I'll explain cookies and sessions in PHP. Till next time.